It's so good to see you. It's so good to be back doing another video again for my YouTube channel. It feels like, well, I say it feels like it's been, uh, it's been a while. That's because it has been a while. That must be, it's about two, pretty much bang on two weeks now since I last popped a video up here on my YouTube channel. It was, of course, just because I'd gone home to Scotland for a little bit of a break. So I went to Scotland and when I came back and uh, I was a hobby maker for a full day. And then I went back to Scotland again and then just came back Sunday night ready for uh, Monday with Ben. So, um, nice little break, but it was so good to be back. So good to be back on Crafters TV. And it's so good to be doing uh, these videos. I love doing these tutorial videos. I uh, love just uh, thinking about different things, simple things, concept things. Um just lots of different ways and I love using lots of different older products as well and that is exactly what we're going to be doing so I've got an idea in my head but what we are going to be using is our brush lettering stamps I absolutely love these ones so I thought what we could do within this one is we're going to do a thinking of you we're going to make a little box as well because I thought we are of course uh, we are pretty much officially now in the, the, the start of the run up to Christmas, that is for sure. However, let's not forget, there's still birthdays, there's still, you know, there's some weddings, there's anniversaries, some, you still need to send uh, a thinking of you card or a little gift to, to someone that's going through a tough time for whatever reason. So I thought, let's do that. Let's do a little gift box. You will be not surprised to know that it's going to hold three of Yankee Candles newer style of the wax melts. I say new, I keep saying new. There's you know, they're about two years old now, the new style. Um but I thought we'd do three, so a nice long box because of course we've got the length of that brush letter in. We're gonna do the thinking of you. I'm gonna go with craft, craft card, and I've got some elements dug out from the Sunflower collection. Thought nice, nice collection, nice one to to use and decorate with when it comes to something it's like thinking of you but then of course you can take the the measurements and the layout that i do you might still want to use the brush lettering but then you might want to change it and do christmas colors maybe you've got the last christmas brush lettering stamps from the other the year you can use them of course so you know you can take the measurements because we'll work out the measurements here and uh, also it lets you see once again, although I've talked about it on Crafters TV and I've shown you how I measure what I am wanting to pop within a box to fit the box around it. So we're going to do that. So as I say, we're going to do the thinking of you brush letter and stamps. We'll do a box to work around the three wax melts. Uh, use Probably use the sunflower dye, the sunflower linen. I'll also use, now when it comes to the sunflower collection, what I... I, I'll use the sunflower dye with the flower forming foam, but I don't heat the foam. I just like the texture. So although it's heat activated foam and you can start to heat it and shape it, and manipulate it, I actually don't do it when it comes to the sunflower dye and the flower forming foam. You'll see what I mean once we actually come to do it because um, it is, it's, uh, it's just one of those things that I like to, I just like to use. I like to have that texture when it comes to the foam. So, that's what we're going to be doing. We'll do, because of the brush lettering as well, I'm going to use the quick dry honey pot and then we'll use the pigment fryer brown because we'll do a little bit of heat embossing as well, with me as well, while we're, we're here. But really, to start with, the box base and the lid, I'm going to use craft card. And it's about working out those measurements. So, that being said, let's go from up above, like so here, and let's bring in our three wax melts. So within the three of them here, these are what I've got. So those are the three that I've got that I'm going to measure that I, of course, want to make the box for. So for me, the easiest way to do this, and actually, let's, I'm going to move my glass mat up into the corner to make it easier for you to see when it comes to the measurements so what i'm going to do let's also bring a little bit of scrap so that i can just kind of jot down the actual measurements i need a pen as well so what i um what i'll always do is i'll line them up so these three lined up are pretty much eight inches. They are eight inches in length. 
So, let me just go up a little bit further. Just to say as well, FYI, in case anyone's wondering or anyone's um, concerned, my my face well, i was about to say my face is fine it's just it's just red it happens within this weather as well as well having my tv makeup on makeup of the weather the cold the dry etc etc so don't worry i am absolutely fine you get me you know it by now what i film is what i put out i don't edit it and the same goes for the way that i look as well i'm not bothered about how i look but just in case anyone's thinking there's something wrong with my eyes or that, i am absolutely fine so do not worry uh do not panic right let's go from back up above so the length is eight inches so i'm just going to do because i know it's going to be a rectangle so the length is eight inches and then what will be the depth essentially is three inches there we go now when it comes to the thickness of them which is then going to be the that's going to be the depth sorry of the wax melts so it is essentially it is they are one inch in depth i'm going to say one and a quarter because i want to have that lick extra little lip at the top so therefore what i'm going to have to do is we'll bring them back around that way because it is one and a quarter the height so let's do what well, i'll just do my little note just there so i need eight inches plus one and a quarter plus one and a quarter now when it comes to that that is then going to be ten and a half inches so that's so the other way that i'll do it as well is i'll just write so plus one and a quarter plus one and a quarter so that's going to give me ten and a half so my card's going to have to be ten and a half inches and then this is going to be the same so three inch plus one and a quarter plus one and a quarter so that's going to be five and a half yeah five and a half so my card stock for that to fit is going to have to be ten and a half inches by five and a half inches and i'll score at one and a quarter all the way along so once again just to go over that whatever the length is and however thick that you want it because you might actually want it thicker than one and a quarter if you want maybe you want to have more depth within the box base that's up to you but it is one and a quarter that we're doing so that's eight inches plus one and a quarter plus one and a quarter and then when it comes to them laying down that is three inches plus that's going to be one and a quarter plus one and a quarter that's how we get the measurements. So it's whatever the, the length and the width are plus whatever the depth is. Remember and add the depth on twice, not just once, because you've got the depth on each side. So I'm hoping that makes a little bit of sense. And you can understand that. Let me just zoom out a little bit more. Here we go. And let's bring that in that way. Let's go that way. There we go. That should be fine. So what we need to do is bring in our cardstock. So cardstock, I've got my two sheets of my craft. So let's bring in my guillotine. So remember, that's going to be 10 and a half inches by five and a half. There. Do the same again. 10 and a half inches by five and a half inches and then let's bring in our scoreboard so on my uh, wait a minute on my box lid what i'm going to do box lid if i remember i'm scoring at one and a quarter inches I don't know where my purple score tool is. There we go. So one and a half inches all the way round. Sorry, one and a quarter inches all the way round. One and a quarter. And then one and a quarter. So that's the box lid. 
do the box base. If you've never seen me do it before, the box base, I find it really hard to score at one and a quarter inches by pushing upwards. So what I just do is I make sure I'm butted up against the edge, but I'll turn it around and then score at one and a quarter. So let's score. And then score. So what I'll do at this point, before I do any assembly or get any decoration, if I just fold and burnish, because I'll go over the way I work the measurements again, but visually by showing you the actual base done. So if I bring that in, so I know that they're going to fit in here. So that's how I've done it. And we've got that little bit of that quarter of an inch lip at the top here. So as I said before, that's eight inches plus one and a quarter plus one and a quarter. And then the height of them are three inches plus one and a quarter plus one and a quarter. So that's what I do when it comes to measuring anything. So let's put them there for now. And let's bring back what's going to be our lid. Now with the lid, what I want to do is I want the actual lip of the lid to be a little bit shallower. So what I do in that way is I'll do my box base and my box lid exactly the same as always, but then I'll come along and I'll trim however much I want to trim. So if I come in here, and I'm going to trim off half an inch. So half an inch from one side. Half an inch from the other. Half an inch from the third. And then half an inch from the fourth. So then that's going to give me a shallower lip all the way around. And it means I don't have to faff about changing measurements for the lid. So let's move that out the way. Um, right, if I'm going to do honey pot and fry our brown. So let's bring in, I'm not going to use any pattern paper. You can do, of course. But honey pot, let's go in a little bit the peachy orange. Because I'm just thinking for, for the base. So I want to do layers within these ones. So that is eight by, eight by one and a quarter. So that's eight by one and a quarter. So let's cut it to that because I don't want a big thick quarter of an inch all the way around. So let's do, let's do one and a quarter by eight inches and then what well, probably is maybe just trim a millimeter or so so if I bring that in there bring that in that's not eight that's seven and three quarters that's why so it's seven and three quarters I wonder why it was overlapping so there we go. So that's a real tight, snug fit. So as I say, I don't want to do my normal quarter of an inch increments because I'm going to have too much of a layer all the way around. So all that I'm going to do is let's just take, let's do a slither. Let's say, let's say maybe about two millimetres. So if I do about two millimetres, one there, and one there, and then that should be fine. That's going to give me a little craft card layer all the way around. So let me check where was I on my guillotine there, because then I can marry that up. There we go. I think I'm. I don't know where I am. 
So let's do that. Again, I'm going to do another one for the smaller edges. It will just trim down. So there's that. So this is my original one. So what was that? Just under seven and three quarters. So let's check to see. Yep, I should be fine with that one. Yeah, happy enough with that one. And then this part of the base, it's three inches. So let's just make it a little bit shorter than three inches couple of mils shorter. It's not even three inches. I think I need my glasses. Here we go. Two and three quarters. That's it. Two and three quarters. And two and three quarters. So that should be my layer. I'm just going to trim. So I'm going to trim them just a little bit shorter. Perfect. That's it. That's what I want. Now, when it comes to the lid, I'm not going to do any matte layer. I'm going to keep that in the brown craft. So let's move that out of the way. Let's just come a little bit face on just for a second, just while I tidy these bits up so we can use that craft again I don't need that I don't need that so let's we can start to assemble the box so let's do our tabs and then we can add the layers on and then we can move on to yeah let's do the stamping I will do the stamping next so let's go from below Let's do our tabs now. So I'm just going to cut down, do a little V. I'll do that with all of these. So I'll do these Vs and then we'll do our mats and layers. Actually, I wonder, should we? I wonder if we should do a little bit of embossing as well. Hmm. Now I know there's obviously there's a 3D embossing folder. Do you want to, maybe just a little bit of texture? I know there's texture when it comes to the the linen. Right. Embossing folders. So these are my 2D embossing folders that I've got in here. I know this isn't exactly the best view for you, but let me have a look. Hessian, luscious leaves. So let's go that way again. This is still not exactly going to be a great view for you, but it gives you an indication as to what I'm looking at. Um, so we could quite like the, the idea of, of that just adding a little bit extra because we'll add some of the, the leaf dyes that come with the sunflower so we could do that um, why have I got 3D Folders in here. Oh no, it is, it's both. What's the way to say, why have we got both? Or, I know what I could, oh. I forgot, I forgot I had, had these ones. Remember these from our tunnel dies? Could always just do a little bit now. About oh yeah oh we could do these this is really going back just with a little bit of striper dots actually yeah let's do that 
Actually, let's do that. Let's put that in there. Let's move that out of the way. What ones have I got in there? Oh, oh yeah, we, we could, but I've... Although that would, that, would, that would be cool. That would be good. I forgot. We've also got our... Duo ones. These ones. Yes, there we go. Traditional textiles. Traditional textiles. And there is the knit one. Yeah, let's use the traditional textiles. Let's add this. So they might, I don't think they'll be as long to fit them in, but uh, hey ho. Right. Well, uh, in actual fact, it wouldn't really matter because we could make a. We could make a. What do you want to call it? A feature of it. Right, tell you what, let's do that then. Let's. I'm going to go as far up to. So I need to do it. That is really a right or wrong way. There we go, that's it. So I'm going to go right up to the embossed edge. I'm going to make it, try and make it as straight as possible. Let's use my mini. What I'm going to do, you know, that's still, that's worked a treat, but I'm just going to add just a little bit of an extra shimmer to really make it stand out. Yeah, I like that. And then we can make some sort of little end feature, which I'll think about in a minute. So let's take, let's do the same again here. Let's get that lined up and straight. Let's add our extra shim in. When I say shim, it's just a piece of craft, as you can see. I'm not going to, I'm not going to add any ink or that to it. No, I'm not. I'm just going to leave it as it is. Yeah, I'm just going to leave it as it is. What I can do, oh, I forgot about these ones. Let's just pop that in and run this one through. I know I could have done them both because of the size of them, but... There's that one. And there's that one. Let's run that one on. that yep like that I like that a lot so how am I going to end those little bits shall I I know what I'll do I was thinking of maybe just a little strip of brown card or something here's bit of craft so what I was thinking even I don't know just off the top of my head couple of mils couple of millimeters kind of creating that full stop edge actually yeah I think I might do that still as to what it was a way to do it's just finish it's just it stops it from just being ending and floating in midair by putting something Kind of gives it that full stop. I like things having. I like things having. That that finish at the end. 
So let's put, I'll say I'll trim this. Just making a feature out of something that's unfinished. Let's take the scissors. But then to finish off that end, I'll add a few little pearls, brown pearls that I've got. So let's do that as well. So don't always think if you're if something like your embossing folder or that is too short for your piece of cardstock, there's ways and means. You know what we could have done? We could have cut that in half and then uh, embossed each bit join it in the middle and join it with a bit of ribbon or a bit of cardstock or a buckle die or something an oval die something like that there's always ways around it and because it's the base i want to assemble i want to decorate the base before i assemble it so i am going to have it so that when you look at the box, you've got it one bit at one end and one bit on the other. I don't want it so that they're both at the same side. So I want it to make it look as though it's been thought thought out, which it has. So I'm going to... Now I need to think, because this is going to be formed the other way. Right, before I put the pedals on, let's assemble it. So let's assemble the box. So I'm going to use tacky glue because... Uh, why am I doing it, Craig? Oh, because certainly with it being my the craft card, which is really, really fibrous, plus because I've embossed this layer now, you've got a lot of uneven layers. So by going in with my tacky glue, it's just going to help bind together. So let's move that in. Let's press that in there. Hold that down. Let's flip that one around and do the same here. So let's sketch throughout the middle and then work our way around. And that one can go there. So it's adding that touchy feely, that tactile feel or that tactileness to your card or your project just by going in with a layer. So let's hold that in. Let's press that down. Then let's go in with our side panel. that into place so let's get that in hold that like that adhere once I've done that for a few seconds let's go in with the last one before we assemble the base now you couldn't you could use your dry adhesive absolutely you can do no problem I'm just thinking all of all the uh, uneven layers. If I use my tacky glue, it's going to sit on the even layers. And it's going to sit and dry nicely against the craft. So there we go. So that is those bits. So if I was to do it that way. So let's do... One, two, three dots. Let's bring in... These little brown pearls that I've got. Do I want brown or do I? Yeah, let's do brown. There's, I've got brown. There's brown and tan there. Let's bring these ones. And let's bring that one. And then. So again, it's finishing off that edge feature, making it look as though it was on purpose. Which it kind of was, because we knew that 
the folder wouldn't reach the whole length of the card, but still makes it look as though it was done on purpose. So once that's folded up, so those three are at the bottom, so let's turn it around and then we'll do the same here. So these three will be at the bottom. These, these perils I usually use, or m most of the time, I use hunky dories, but I also use bibbies, don bibby. These are dons. Because she does great gems and perils as well. But no matter what I use, whatever brand, I always add tacky glue underneath. Just to ensure, even although they're self-adhesive, I'll always add the tacky glue, which many of you know that by now. So let's start to assemble the base. So let's go in there. So I tend to do glue on two tabs to start with. So as this one is grabbing, that other one that I've added the glue to is going to start to go off. It's going to start to set and get tacky. Which then means by the time We'll miter it together. So let's hold these two while they are grabbing. And then once I've done that, once I've done that, let's do the next two. So again, let's add my tacky glue onto there. Let's add my tacky glue onto there. So let's go back to the first one that we're done. Miter and join that corner together. Hold and grab. If you want to hold them with any pegs or that, then you can do. But let's just hold. And then let's come in with the last one, which will have started to go off, which we want, which just helps that tackiness. Like that grab. Let's just make sure it's all nice and neat. Press all that in. If you do happen to find that you've missed a couple of little bits. Good thing with the tacky glues, we can just go in, reapply it. Let's just form that base in and let's press. So there, and then they were say, we've made a nice little feature on the end there. So that is that. And then one, two, three. There we go. Let's bring that in there. And then what we could do, if you want to secure, if you just want to make sure that they're kind of secured, I'm going to take all that off, even if you just put in a little dot, so just a glue dot into there, what do we do? let's just set that, make sure we're in, no glue there, it's finished, and then I'm going to do the middle one. I'm just taking these off because probably for the time being, until I probably use this box, I'll probably take these wax melts out and use them myself to pop that in. And then last, but by no means least. You know, you could just add the dot onto the back of you know, the uh, ingredients bit if you wanted to. And then let's just, before we press to commit, there we go. So then, semi-secure in the box. And then there we go. There's the box base, which is done. So that's how I measure whatever it is that I'm wanting to do. If you've still got any of the old style waxes from Yankee Candle or waxes from any brand, that's how I tend to measure them. 
that you can see there. So let's move that out of the way. And let's, can't do anything with that at the moment because we need to do it some stamp. I suppose we could just cut the tabs just now. So remember, these edges, I'm not going to add any card to it like I've done with the base. Because I want to have kind of that, that breaking layer. I want you to see some of that embossed orange on the base panel. But then you're going to have that crisp brown craft along the top. So what I mean by that is once that box has been formed, that's how it's kind of going to start to look. You can, of course, add card if you want to. It's entirely up to yourself. I'm not. So let's go in. I've got white multi-purpose. And with your brush letter stamps, your best friend will absolutely be your stamping platform. It really, really will. Let's just try. Obviously, I don't need that full height. So let's just cut it roughly to certain size because we'll be trimming it anyway to fit the box lid so let's use our discs to hold down here so if i bring in my stamps let's do thinking of you will i do thinking of you or will i do something a bit cheerier let's, let's do thank you so much and if you want, it's not the brush letter stamps. Clearly, I was going to do something with the uh, animals with attitude. Yeah, let's let's not do thinking. You can do thinking of you. This this color, this style that I'm doing would work for thinking of you. Let's just make it a little bit happier. Let's go. Thank you. So let's take the thank you. If I bring the thank you in, and let's get that. Semi straight, he says. Try not get my head in the way there. Now, of course, you can use the grid on the actual stamping platform to make sure it's nice and straight if you want to. But as I say, we're going to be trimming it anyway. You know what? That's not bad. I'm happy with that. So, this one we're going to do with the quick dry honey pot. So let's do that. So let's go in with the honey pot, quick dry. I'm using these colours because these work well with the sunflower. Although it would work well if you want to do maybe like daisy or something like that. So line that up and press. I always do them a quick dry as well. I'll tend to give them a couple of impressions. So reapply. Twist, turn, and press. And I'm going to do one more just to make it nice and strong. Ink up. And then press and apply. So that is, of course, quick dry. It's going to dry uber quick. So I'm going to move it out the way there. But because I'm going to do heat embossing in a second, I am purposely just going to leave it just that tiny, tiny little bit longer just to ensure it has completely dried, which it already has because it's quick dry. But you know what I mean when it comes to embossing, embossing powders. So let's clean our stamp while we're just giving it that moment. So clean that. Dry it off. And then that's my stamp done. Let's put that one back. Let's bring the so very much. Let's bring that one out. Let's get a wipe and clean that. Let's put that into there and dry that off. That there because we'll clean that stamp in a moment. Let's bring this back in. Let's align that one up so very much. 
if I bring that in, kind of align it, I want to have the U that is dipping down a little bit further. We should be fine there. Just going to make sure that's dry properly. And I'm using the Fryer Brown pigment because it's nice and sticky. And let's bring in. There's my clear embossing powder. Let's go into my box of delights. Clear gloss, that's it. And, oh sugar, I've just dropped one of my other powders. Never mind. At least it was all it was unopened, so that's fine. It's just gone down the side of my desk. Right, let's get our heat tool good to go. My heat tool always ends up like Christmas tree lights. You think that you pop it away nice and neat and then you go and get it again and it's all tied in and up. Right. So let's bring this in. So I still do this, even though I'm doing a bit of heat embossing, I'm still going to do the same. That is, I'm going to give a couple of impressions. So let's press that in. Actually, I think, let's go darker. Let's go seal brown. I mean, that's fact, I've not even used a seal brown when it comes to the pigment. So I'm just going to go straight over because, of course, we're going dark over light, so we're not going to see it. So let's press that in. You can see that coming through. Thanks so very much. And let's do one more. Let's do one more. Pop it in. Let it settle. Press. That's going to stop any shadowing. Now before I clean that stamp, let's do our embossing. Let's move that all out the way for now. Let's bring in our powder. And then I'm going to bring that in. The uh, quick dry will have dried, so that's not going to attract any of the powder. And I don't want to bend really that bit of cardstock, so there we go. So that's now turned the seal brown to a little bit more of a cloudy brown, but of course that will change once we melt it. So let's get our heat tool good to go. I'm just going to tap that excess off again. Get this to temperature. And then I'm going to start the tail end and work my way along. So I'm not sure, probably won't be able to see the change as it's happening. So as it's melting over the H, the C, the U and the M, just lightly go back over. Same again with the Y, the R, the E, the V, and then there we go. So you can see that light reflecting off this so very much, which is quite cool. Love heat and bossing. Right, let that cool down slightly. Let's bring in all these bits. Let's bring in a stamp. Let's, that. let's bring that in and let's zoom out a bit more. Now that we've done the close up. Try that off. And then that is us good to go with the stamp set next time I need it. Let's bring the stamp back in here. And then let's get in that 
wipe once again. And just clean that off. I won't, no, I won't need the stamping platform again. I need the stamp cleaner and that can go out to the side. There we go, tidy that away later on. So let's bring this one back in. So we're going to go really, really quite quite close when it comes to our layer because of course we've only got what did I say about three yeah three inches to play with so let's do that first of all so I'm going to come right close to the bottom tail of the Y I'm going to line that up so I'm going to come quite close to here which is giving me about three mil. I'm going to turn that around. I'm going to do the same. Be careful at this point because what you will have is you'll have your card that will have slightly bent and buckled because of the heat. So just make sure that it is straight. And then this time I'm going to do the same again. So I'm going to go right to that tail end. I'm going to come close up. I'm kind of keeping the same frame distance all the way around. And I'm going to do the same into here that we've got. If you wanted to, you can just have it so it's elongated to the full length, but we're going to fill it with a sunflower at each side. So I'm not bothered about that. So let's take... So that's going to go straight onto there. Let's do... We'll do a layer of the, the orange... And then, so let's do, let's give that a matting layer with the leftover craft that I've got. Let's bring that in. So that is five and three quarters. So let's say six inches. I might trim it a little bit more, but we'll see in a moment. And that is one and three quarters. So let's do two inches. Easy enough, like so. So I might leave it at that actual quarter of an inch. So I set that there. And then the actual box lid again, what did I say? That was going to be eight inches, eight by three, didn't I? So let's do, let's do two and three quarters. Two and three quarters by seven and three quarters. Bring that into there. So that's going to give me a light matte layer all the way around. I might actually even, let me just bring that down by maybe about a millimeter. a little bit more yeah yeah that little bit more and then that can sit nicely into there yep I like that I like where I'm going with that so let's assemble these bits I'm just going to stick with my tacky glue one I'm going on to the craft again which is really fibrous but also because I've heat embossed onto this one. I slightly bent the card so This was just a white multi-purpose, by the way. Now the red liner taper that would still Oh gosh, look, I've got inky fingers. Actually, I might be able to hide that with the sunflower. So yeah, so your craft card your craft card, your red liner tape will still more than do the job. But just use it. The tacky. Let's hold and press that in. And then what we're going to do is let's put this into place. And then before we start to do anything else, we'll assemble the lid. So let's bring that into there. What you could have done as well, and I don't know what I've done with it, could have wrapped them in tissue paper. But as I say, I don't know what I've done with the tissue paper. 
it sticks to tissue paper that I've got, but I don't know what I've done with it. I'll find it when I'm not looking. So there we go. So we've got our main base platform here good to go. So let's assemble these. So as previous, let's add glue onto two of the bits. Tuck that in. And form that corner. Once we've got that corner in my yard, we're just going to grab that. Let that grab, let it do its thing. And then we can move on to the next one. Oh, let's just pop back off. So let's hold that again. Probably sh don't think I'll need more glue. It should still be enough. So let's hold both, both these corners together. Hold them until that should be them. Let's turn them around. Add our glue. Bring that in. I wonder if I can do both again at the same time. Kill a couple of seconds. So I just need to... Might or just a... Another little bit out of there. It's not quite joining up. There we go, that's fine. My angle wasn't quite right at the little uh, the little snip. Let's hold that in. And that should be that. So let's bring that in. There we go. There's our box. Now, as I say, if you wanted to add paper or card or that, then, of course, you can do. You absolutely can do. But I just like to have that kind of, that difference, that block of the craft, and then you see that pattern underneath. So if I bring this one back into here, tell you what I'm also, actually, what I am going to do is, there's, well, that'll be fine, perfect. I'm going to give that a light green layer because on the back of the sunflowers what we will do is we'll die cut a couple of the leaves within this green so it's just pulling it all together so that was six inches so let's do six and a quarter and that was two inches let's do two and a quarter but i don't want that full quarter of an inch thickness i want it a little bit thinner so i'm just going to trim Maybe about two layers off, two layers, two millimetres off. Straighten that up, Craig. Like so. And then just a tiny, tiny, a little bit more. There we go. So that's just going to pull the whole lid together again with the peach, the craft and the green. I keep saying peach, it's more like peach than orange. So let's layer that in. Let's just hold and press that down. Let me get another wipe and clean my hand or my fingers. It's annoying. Because I've now cleaned my hand, got all that ink off, because that's still damp, of course, I won't... Uh, put that into into the bin what i'll do is that just goes into my little damp container and that's where i just hold my glue like so so that's what i do it stops uh stops the nozzle drying out and it stops me having to put a pin in it all the time right so let's just press that down so it's nice and firm just going to make sure that's nice and straight i'm going to come in with my foam pads i used all my big ones have we got any left yeah I've got loads at the side of me, but I just meant ones that I've opened. So I'm going to add a little bit of lift with this one. These are two millimetres in depth, in case you're wondering. So let's bring that in. Let's take these off. And we're going to put that central. You could put it to the side and then make a lovely feature with this sunflower. But I'm going to go right into the middle. 
and do a sunflower at each side. Yep, there we go. So we've got thank you box come together so far. So there's that. Then let let's get the let's get the sunflower. So there's we've got another bit of green for the leaves. Yeah, there we go. So we've got that green there. Sort that later. Got my sunflower die here. So I'll need that one, that one, that one, and then that leaf. I should have another leaf. Yes, I do. Down into here. Actually, I didn't know I had foam already cut in there. So that's a bit. That's all right. That would that would be fine. Um, there's the leaf. Oh, let's let's cut it. Let's do it all fresh. Let's do it all from scratch. Let's pop them back into there. Let's bring in the foam. So I'm going to need the yellow. I'm going to need a little bit of brown for the center, and I'm going to need the yellow. So the sunflower, I will cut out the foam. And the leaves I'm going to cut out of the green card just to give it a few different textures. So let's take so if I do sunflower there and a sunflower there. Let's roughly cut. Remember, I'm not going to heat this. I'm just going to keep the texture of the foam as it is. So my mini. There's my mini. Let's bring in my small plates. I've got my heat gun already on because that's going to be the best thing to adhere to these layers. Let's make sure the foam is straight so I don't miss any petals. There. And there. So I'm just going to do one large and one smaller sunflower. So as take these two. And then these two. So what I mean by that is let's separate them. So here's the two large. There's the two small that will overlap. And then I'll probably do something like that. So that's the sunflower. The tiny little centre of the sunflower. Let's just cut that. And fold that in. Fold that over the top. Cut that out. So there's that. And then there's that. And then the two leaves here. Let's take that one. And let's pop that one there. Let's pop it to the top because I can use a bit more of that card. Let's not be wasteful. So I'll do two leaves. I'll do two leaves per sunflower. I usually do threes, things in threes. I'll tell you what, there's two for now. Another two. Let's do a third just so that I've got them if I decide I want to use them. I've got that little bit of green card left, so let's let's just do the small one. Let's do that twice. That one can go there. That one can then go into there. So that is our leaves and our sunflowers done. So let's do that. All that I will pack away later, but this let's just put back 
in so I don't lose them. Right, let's bring this back in. Let's bring these back in. So I've got my hot gun, hot glue gun all ready. So let's bring in my hot glue gun. Oh my god, oh, I switched it off. I went to get myself ready. I went I went to get myself ready to do this tutorial. I thought, right. Uh, I was having issues to start with, with connecting my phone to, to the software that I use. So I thought, right, tell you what, I'll let that connect. I'll go and have my tea. I thought, I better take my hot glue gun out. So I took it out and I forgot to plug it back in. So we'll just need to wait for a second or two. We could... Let's take... We could just do a little bit of shaping when it comes to these here. So just going to bend them in. Nothing much. Bend and fold them in, and bend and fold them in. Let's see, I still don't know if I'll do the three or not yet. But let's bring that one in, and bring that one into here. So there's that. What we could, what we could do, let's set that there, set that there. If we bring this one back in, if we let's make a feature another little feature with the peril so i've got three going in that way so let's do one two actually let's make it closer together one two three and let's bring these in here so let's stick with the dark brown let's do one i'll line them up better in a moment two and then three so again it's given a little bit of interest to the lid edge press that in like so and then i'm going to turn that one around i'm going to kind of lever it up because i don't want to move them Let's do one, two, three. It's just about giving your eye something else to look at when it comes to a little box. You don't have to do this. It still looks pretty as it is. It's just giving the edges. And what's happening is although these are horizontal and these are portrait, it's still... It's tying them all together by doing three at one side that is horizontal and three there that is portrait. Just that little bit, extra, as I say, that little bit of extra interest. Move that out of the way. I might still use a few more of them. Let's see if this is heating up enough yet. I just need to put a tiny little bit within the middle. Not much, because I am going to flatten it. I'm going to layer it and offset it. And then once I'm exactly where I want it to be, I'm just going to press like that. And then another little bit within the middle. Get rid of that glue, start, scrap, glue strand. pop that one in there and then there's my little flower forming foam sunflower but without it being heated let's bring in the next one a little bit of glue within the middle there make sure it's the right way just by checking the indentations press that in little bit of hot glue there and let's press that and so purposely keeping it all flat i want it to be flat you can still use pads and that foam pads if you want to to add height so now let's bring that into about there let's bring 
that into about there. I'm going to bring that into here. Yeah, I'm liking that. So let's just do a bit of hot glue in that corner. At this point, you can use your glue gel in that if you want to, but just while I'm still using the hot glue, I'm just going to keep using it. And it means it's going to be pretty much instantly set after a moment or two. Let's bring that one in and bring that into there. So I'm kind of just making sure it's aligned into the corners there so they're not over the edge of the box. And so there's the largest one. I'm going to position them in first. So there's that. And then the largest one there. And the smallest one there. But I want to tuck one underneath. I'll pop it out. See, now I'm just speaking to myself. Do I want that just peeping out the edge there? I don't know. I think the two... I actually think the two is enough. I do. I think the two is enough. Or what if I snip that in half and have that popping out... Yeah, I quite like, actually, yeah, I quite like that. It's coming from, well, would it, would it really come between the petals? Probably not. But who, who, hey, it could be a fantasy flower if you want. Yeah, let's just have it just peeping out and no more. Let's do the same with the nut one too. Let's have it so that it's peeping out into here. Yeah. So now that I know where I want them, I'm just going to still use my hot glue. Let's bring in my pokey tool and lift that there. Let's bring in that one there. And let's tuck that one under. And manoeuvre that one into here. Press that in there. Let's bring that bit out. Add a little bit of hot glue. Let's use a pokey tool. Let's take away that excess. Don't want to see that. Yep. Yep, like that. And I'm running out of glue sticks, so let me get my pack of glue sticks. So I'm just going to heat up that end there. And then get that so it connects to the one in there, so hopefully it won't fall out as I start to prise them all in. Where's my um is that falling out? Where's my little bit of my It's disappeared. It's done and on right, we'll find it in a minute. So let's then pop that one underneath there, manipulate that in. Things like this, it is better if you use your tacky glue or your glue gel because it means you've got movability. You can move it about as you're kind of stuck when it comes to the glue gun because it's quite instant. Let's pop that one into there. I'm going to try and I'm going to take a layer of that orange off but I'll be able to hide that it's not too bad actually where's that where's my little bit the little bit the little green where's that gone right, I'm going to actually trim that pop 
that one. I'm going to trim that again. I'm just going to curve around. The so only thing we're using hot glue is because it obviously dries rock solid. It means it's a lot harder for you to manipulate little bits of leaves and that because there's nowhere for it to go because the hot glue that's dried is blocking it. All right, so I like that. So let's pop that in. Plus, once it is dried, we can still start to manipulate the card. Let's bring that in. Let's lift that into there. I don't know where that bit's gone. So let's cut another one. Just a little bit of the green. Don't need it all because obviously I snipped it down. Just enough, just so it's poking out the edge. Pop that one out. And then let's snip that. And a little bit of glue there. And then let's pop that one underneath here. Move that in. Thank you so much, so very much. And let's just add a couple. So let's do one, two, three towards that sunflower. Let's pick that up. So let's do, actually they're a bit too close now. So let's do one. Two, three. Let's do one, two, three. Nice autumnal colours, even although we're now into the winter. Let's do the same here. One, two, three. But that's the thing, you know, but just by changing the colour. Changing the colour, you know, that could be red, green and golds and do a poinsettia instead of the sunflower and that will be your that'll be your Christmas colours and a Christmas Christmas gift put in some of the Christmas wax melts instead and there we go yeah happy with that I like that I like that so let's Manipulate with just a wee bit more. Fluff them up ever so slightly. Bend that in. Move that in. And then there we go. There we go. We've got our lovely long box that holds three Yankee Candle Wax Melts. It just so happens I've put Pink Sand there, Ocean Air and Fresh Cut Roses. It's just the three that I grabbed. Embossed the edges. Showed you how my cardstock was a little bit too long for my folder. So I just showed you how you can make a, make a feature of that. And then there we go. Our little gift box. You can add your papers if you want to. That's entirely up to yourself. But I'm not going to I'm going to keep it just like that. I hope you like that one. I hope you like that. So there we go. Let's bring that a little bit further up for you to see. Thank you so very much. So we've got the edges here. You can see all the way around with the wax melts inside. And let's pop that into there. And then there you go. You've got hello all the way around. And then you can then add more decoration if you want to, or add less, or change the colours, change the flowers, change the sentiment, do whatever you want. But hopefully that is then going to give you another extra little help as to how I uh, measure whatever it is I want to pop into the box. That's how I do it. So whatever the width is, plus what the height is, the left and the right, 
and same when it comes to uh, the actual um, well, that was yeah the length and yeah the length and the height just by doing it that way so hopefully that helps uh, when it comes to that explanation and hopefully you like that project as well. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, of course, give me a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. Hit that bell to be notified whenever I pop more videos. Now that I'm back from my um, little breakaway, we'll get these back up on um, a reoccurring occasion. Reoccurring occasion? Uh, more often, essentially. And then if you... So subscribe, thumbs up. Yeah, if you're not subscribed... Just subscribe and hit the bell notification and then whenever I do upload any of these tutorial videos you'll be notified and then by giving me a thumbs up just helps too which I'd really appreciate it. Rightio I am going to go and get tidied up now and I hope you have a lovely day I hope you have a lovely night whatever it is wherever it is whatever the time zone it is wherever you are across the globe it's lovely to have your company here on my YouTube channel and I will see you the next time thank you very much bye